gas. The evidence comes from another oracle of the ancient world, this one at Delphi, Greece. The most famous of all of the oracles was the oracle at Delphi. At Delphi, it is thought that the god Apollo could inspire a person who could be a priestess of Apollo to foresee the future. Delphi is a small village about 100 miles from modern-day Athens. From the 8th century BC to the 4th century AD, pilgrims traveled there from throughout the Mediterranean to pose questions to the priestesses of Apollo. The priestess entered an underground chamber and there went into a trance. In this trance, she would give prophecies that were evocative, intriguing, and often surprisingly accurate. She was in a, an altered state. Occasionally, she's described as chewing laurel leaves. And people have commented that this may have had a, a psychotropic effect. There is other evidence of psychotropic effects. In 1998, a geological team discovered two fault lines running under the temple at Delphi which led to underground stores of ethylene gas. In small quantities, ethylene produces a mild euphoria and is the key ingredient in the dangerous practice of glue sniffing. In large quantities, the gas is a powerful hallucinogen that produces visions and sometimes incoherent raving. This ambiguity may be the key to the oracle's success. The basic principle of a good prophet or a good oracle is keep it vague. Allow for a variety of different futures to be taken as fulfillment of prophecy. And the poetry that came from the oracle at Delphi was very much like that. It was often rather vague and was open to interpretation. Like Delphi, the cave of the Sibyl was also underground, connected to volcanic gases and fault lines. If you ingest hallucinogens, the brain interprets that as something external to itself, even though we know, of course, it's internal. But that only adds to the mystery and, and the overall sense of something special going on. Yet the fact remains that the Delphic Oracle seemed to accurately and specifically predict the fame of Socrates years before he was known the defeat of the Persian invasion of Greece in 480 BC, and Alexander the Great's conquest of the known world. Ancient man had a very, very sophisticated mindset, and I think it represents an inconsistency on our part to embrace his rationalism, his historiography, his engineering, to embrace all these things and yet to make no room whatsoever for ancient man's interest in prophecy and oracles. The accuracy of these ancient oracles is not just a moot point, because these doomsday prophecies apparently referred to our own time. And some find disturbing confirmation of the 2012 doomsday in the calendar of the ancient Mayans, which gives a far more specific timetable for apocalypse, including the year, the month, and the day.